Welcome to the New English Knitter Knitting Podcast. My name is Lizzie, also known as the New English Knitter, here on YouTube and on Instagram. And you can also find me on Ravelry as LizzieHut94. I'll write both of those down below, along with my show notes, and also the link to my projects page on Ravelry. The last time I posted a video was about a week ago, and I've done quite a bit of knitting in that time for two reasons. Uh, the first being that I haven't been working um, because of the current pad pandemic that's going on. Um, I've been signed off work for health reasons, uh, being in a higher risk category for, um, for the coronavirus. Uh, so I've had quite a bit of uh, free time. <laughs> and the second reason is that I ordered some, uh, some yarn. Uh, I really, really wanted to finish the Sunday sweater that I showed on my first podcast um, and for that I needed some more yarn and I haven't been able to find the right colour that I needed in my local yarn shop and I noticed that um, they were having a sale on, um, on a Norwegian website, strikamecca.no so I managed to get the, um, the mohair that I needed um, and it was on sale, so that was great. Um, but I wanted to make use of um, the fact that I was ordering the yarn in and I wanted to get free postage so I had to spend a certain amount to get that. Um, so I, I got quite a bit of yarn and I've been doing quite a bit of knitting and I'm going to share all of that with you today. So, let's see, first take a sip of my tea. I'm drinking uh, lemon green tea today. Um, so I guess the first thing I can show is my Sunday sweater. Um, so I'll start with my finished object. So this is a finished object and I'm really, really, really happy with it. Here it is in all its glory. <laughs> As I said last time, I really, really love the colour of this one and I really feel like I'm going to get a lot of wear out of it. I did make some modifications to the pattern, um, so as I said last time, the yarn that I've used, um, I held two strands of DK weight yarn together with a silk mohair, and um, my gauge was a little bit different than what it says in the pattern, so I decided to knit um, a size extra large. Normally I'd be um, around a size medium or a large. Um, and I've tried it on and um, I'm quite happy with the way that it fits so I'm glad that I did that. But when it came to the sleeves, um, the, she does say in the pattern that the sleeves are quite long. Um, and so I measured my arm length, so from my, from my underarm down to my wrist and that was 47 centimetres. So I actually followed um, followed the rate of increases and the length portion of the pattern according to the size small for the sleeves but following the stitch count for the size extra large if that makes sense um, so that I wouldn't end up with sleeves that were you know past, past my hand. That being said the sleeves are still um, a little bit too long. I think if I knit this sweater again I would knit them a little bit shorter and also um, they are quite um, wide the, the sleeves um, they are supposed to be a little bit puffy but I think um, they started off quite wide at the top so I would probably start the increases a little bit later on um, in the sleeve but I'm still happy with it but it's just small things that I, I would change um, when it came to doing the length of the sweater, I didn't, um, I didn't even <laughs> look at what it said in the pattern, I just tried it on. So I, I knit um, both of the sleeves first and then continued the body because I was able to try it on and see where I wanted it to, to finish. Um, and it ended up being 53 centimetres from uh, the top uh, of the sweater where the cuff is uh, all the way down to the bottom. Um, and I'm really happy with the length, it's perfect to wear with jeans, which is what I wanted it for. Um, and I think this is going to be a really, uh, really warm sweater, so 
probably not for summer, depends. <laughs> Maybe here in Norway I can get away with wearing it in the summer sometimes, depends what kind of summer we have. But definitely for kind of autumn and winter it will be, will be perfect and I can layer it up as I need. Um, so the only other thing to say really is um, the cost of the sweater. So um, I was just a bit curious to see um, how much it cost me because I bought the yarn, I spread it out over time. It's kind of easy to uh, yeah, kind of forget about what, what you're spending on the yarn. But um, I worked it out, so I, I, I didn't actually count the skeins as I was using them. But I was left over with, I knew that I'd used four skeins of the mohair, which is 50 grams each. And I weighed what I was left with, which was, um, I think, yeah, 19 grams. So I weighed that and worked out then how much I'd used and compared that to the, the meterage. And then I was able to work out how much of the DK weight yarn that I used. And I used uh, 16 skeins of the DK weight yarn, um, each being 50 grams. And I was en ended up with 53 grams left over. So it used quite a lot of yarn. And it ended up coming to a cost of uh, 1,475 krona, which is about £114.50. <laughs> um, so for me, that is very expensive. Um, do I regret it? No, <laughs> because I really, really love it. Uh, would I knit it again? Absolutely. Will I be knitting it again anytime soon? Um, probably not with the same cost of yarn. I would love to knit this pattern again, but I'd probably leave out the mohair um, and see if I could find a, uh, a thicker yarn, maybe a worse weight yarn, um, so that I don't have to hold two strands together. And I think that would work out a lot cheaper. Um, I don't think the mohair is necessary for it, um, I probably could have skipped that out, but I really do like um, how it kind of changed the colour and made it a little bit more um, interesting. Um, and also it was just really fun to knit with. So um, <clears throat> I think that's all I've got to say about that one really. Um, it's, you've probably seen it <laughs> a lot, I mean it's been knit by a lot of people. It's got around um, 1,000 projects on Ravelry. So if you're interested in knitting this one, I would recommend it. It's a very easy pattern to follow. Um, and if you go on Ravelry, you can have a look at the projects that other people have done and what yarn they've used. So you can see how it works up in, in different yarns and how it looks on different people, different body shapes, different body sizes. Um, you'll be able to find a lot of projects on there that will help you. The next finished object that I have is the headband that I'm wearing. So when I finished the Sunday sweater, I decided to cast on for this headband so that I could wear it with my Babo sweater, which I'm also wearing today. This headband is called Headband with a Twist by Morella Moments over on Ravelry. It's a free pattern. Um, you knit it uh, flat. Um, it's knit in English rib, which I believe is a uh, brioche knitting stitch, um, not entirely sure, um, but um, you knit it flat, um, so it's, you knit on this many stitches to make it this width, you can make it whatever width you want, and then you knit it to the length you need it to be to fit around your head, uh, twist it, fold it, seam it together um, and it's finished. So the seam is actually um, where, this, uh, where this fold is and twist is here. So the seam is hidden which is quite nice. Um, and there's also a video tutorial that goes along with the written instructions which I found really helpful and it was really clear to follow. Um, this didn't use a lot of yarn at all. I think this uses about uh, 75 metres of the drops air yarn that I use to make my Favo sweater. This is the colourway Wheat uh, 02. And I knit this in 3.5mm needles um, with this DK weight yarn. I 
would like to make another one. Um, I think I'd like to make one that's a little bit uh, narrower, so not as wide. I find myself kind of folding it over like this um, because I prefer it a little bit narrower. But small detail and I can easily knit another one up in a day, so not a problem. Last finished object that I have today is um, a hat. And this is actually a hat that I designed myself. I um, wanted to challenge myself and see if I could design something and a hat seemed like probably one of the easier things to do. So it uses a little bit of uh, fisherman's rib, English rib, same as is in this uh, headband. Um, and it is a reversible hat. So you can choose which side you want it on if you want the ribbing to show like that or like that. Uh, I won't show you it on today because I've got a, a bun and, and this on, but maybe in another video I will show. Um, it's a little bit too big for me. Um, it fits, it won't fall off, but I like my hats to have to stretch a little bit to fit over my head. Um, and this doesn't really have to stretch. So um, I'm still kind of working on the pattern. Um, I kind of knew when I casted this on that um, I'd probably have to knit it a few times to get it right. I don't really know what I'm doing, so. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'll probably um, cast on fewer stitches next time um, just to play around with the pattern a little bit. But it was fun to do. And this is using the same yarn as everything that I'm wearing. Um, I still have about three skeins left of the Drops Air yarn. So uh, yeah, if anyone has any suggestions for what I could do with that, um, I'm not really sure. It's not, it's not enough to make a sweater, but it's kind of too much to make uh, hats and things. But I guess I could just make, make a lot of accessories or could just, just leave it and work on other things. I'm not really sure yet. We'll see. I would also like to point out um, the sweater that I'm wearing. As I mentioned, it's the Favo sweater. And I talked about this in, my, um, in the first episode of my podcast. So if you want to watch that video, then you can um, find out a bit more details about this. But I just wanted to uh, show what it looked like on, um, because I, I don't feel like I really did it justice in the last video. Um, and I've been wearing it quite a lot. It looks really good with um, jeans, with shorts. Um, it's really nice when I'm popping out into the garden just to pop it on quickly and go outside. And it just keeps me that little bit warmer. And I can still do my gardening because I don't, my arms are free, I don't have any sleeves on it. Um, so you can make that modification too if you want. And I have three works in progress to talk about today. One of them you've seen before and two of them are new. So we'll start with the one that you've seen before. Um, if you watched my first episode, then you will have seen it. This is the um, Sunday cardigan by Petite Knit. So there's a little bit of a theme here. Um, let's see, how should I hold this up? This way maybe? This is the top and this is the bottom where the body is going to be. So that's the right side there. Um, so I have separated for the sleeves and I've started, just started knitting the uh, first sleeve here. Um, so like I did with the Sunday sweater, I'm uh, knitting the sleeves first so I can try it on and decide what length I want the body to be. Um, <coughs> yeah, I'm, I'm really excited to finish this one. I really want to be able to start wearing it. I think it will be really good in the summer. And you'll probably see this as a finished object next time because I have a feeling that I'm going to be knitting on this quite a lot. Um, if you want more details about this, then you can head over to my uh, first episode where I talk about it a little bit more, and I will uh, talk about it more in my, probably my next podcast. Whenever I finish it, I will, I will talk about it again. Um, but the yarn that I'm using is the uh, Dala Alpaca Magic in the colourway uh, 313. It's a 63% alpaca, 37% polyamide, and I'm using the Dala Kid Silk in the colorway 9024, which is 
which is 56% mohair, 26% silk and 18% wool. Um, the kid silk is the same as the one that I've used in my Sunday sweater. Um, that's definitely what was the more expensive part of my Sunday sweater. Um, and we'll probably be making this cardigan a little bit more pricey as well. But I did buy um, I did buy this one on sale. I got I think about four, maybe five skeins of it. Um, so I don't have to feel quite as bad. <laughs> but you can make this without mohair. Um, it's totally up to you. When I was ordering yarn um, on the online website that I mentioned, I wanted to try some uh, cheaper yarns, some cheaper projects, um, just to just to see what I can make um, at a lower cost. Um, and one thing I thought that I could give a go was uh, a dishcloth. So I ordered some um, cotton bamboo yarn. This is the Viking of Norway bamboo, and it's 50% bamboo, 50% cotton. It's really soft. Um, and I was quite interested to work with this because I've never used um, a cotton or bamboo uh, yarn before. Normally I use um, animal based fibres, not plant based. So um, I thought I would see how, how this worked. And um, cotton, cotton yarn is generally quite cheap, so it's quite a good option. Um, and I wanted to see if, if I liked it. Um, and I started. This is called the Ball Band Dishcloth by uh, Kay Gardner and Anne Shane. It's another free pattern um, and I'm really, really liking how it's working up. Um, so far, I've really enjoyed using the cotton and bamboo blend. Um, it's, yeah, it's easy to work with. Um, it is quite slippery, so if you're a beginner knitter, just be aware of that, especially if you're using metal uh, needle tips. But, yeah, it, it's not a problem, you just have to be aware of it as, as you're working it up. Um, so in the pattern they suggest to use worsted weight yarn um, and 4.5mm needles. Uh, this is more of a, a DK weight yarn, so I'm using 4mm needles, but um, didn't need to swatch for this one because it doesn't really matter, <laughs> it's just a dishcloth. So, um, I just cast on the same number of stitches that, that it said and decided that I was happy with, uh, with the width of it and just carried on in the pattern as it says. It's a really easy pattern to follow um, and yeah, I will probably have this finished next time. Um, I'll be interested to see how many I can make out of these, they're each 50 gram skeins um, and see you know, how much one dishcloth and how and how well they work I will feed back to you on that uh, as well and the last thing that I want to show today is some Christmas socks that I've been working on um, yes I know it's May <laughs> um, I can't explain it I just wanted to, I just wanted to knit some Christmas socks um, I had some uh, some red and white and grey yarn and that was the first thing that popped into my head um, this is um, a pattern that I'm kind of improvising. Um, I saw a picture of, uh, it, was a, it was a Christmas stocking knit by Anna and Carlos. Um, they have a YouTube channel as well. Um, it was one of those big Christmas stockings that you hang on a fireplace or whatever, more as a decoration. Um, and I thought it would be really nice um, wearable socks. So I kind of, took inspiration from uh, that pattern and just shrinking it down a little bit and changing it a little bit to make it my own. Um, and what I'm using to do that is um, a website that I found called stitchfiddle.com um, where you can um, get, uh, kind of design your own knitting charts. Um, it's a really, really great website, really easy to use. Um, and I think you can save you probably at least 10, I'll have to check that, but you can save a few of your designs uh, without kind of upgrading to the premium version. So there's a lot of things you can do without upgrading. Um, and I just take a take a screenshot.
screenshot and put it on a Word document so that I've got it. Um, that's another way of doing it. So I've been finding that really great. Um, and yeah, this is as far as I've gotten with the first sock. I'm using the Eda Strumpagarn, um, which is a sport weight uh, sock yarn. It's, I think, uh, 70, let's see. 80% uh, wool and 20% 25, uh, 20 nylon. Um, it's not super soft, but I think um, the more that I wash it and the more that I wear it, um, it will get a little bit softer. Um, it's kind of one of those classic kind of rustic uh, sock yarns. And hopefully it will, will hold up quite well. Um, so yeah, I don't really know what this will look like next time, because as I said, I'm kind of improvising it as I go along. Um, but hopefully next time I'll have a little bit more to show you and I'm knitting these with a 3.5mm needle for the colour work sections and a 3mm needle for the uh, non-colour work sections because when I do colour work I do knit it quite tightly so I go up the needle size to help with that. And that's it, I think. I feel like I got through that really quickly. <laughs> um, so, yeah. I hope you enjoyed, and um, hopefully, next time I'll have a little bit more to show. Um, I am uh, actually going back to work this week, um, so potentially a little bit less knitting time, although. Um, there is a lot less work for me to do at the moment um, because of the current situation. So um, I don't have a lot on my work calendar yet. So we'll see. Um, probably in the next couple of weeks I can still get quite a bit of knitting done and show you that. Um, so thank you for watching today and hope to see you next time.